I asked it to create in a folder called uh, what is it? Twitter data, right? Here is it, and this is this this looks like a text file. Okay, it has a text extension, but it is not text file. This is Avro. I want to show you that if I download this file, actions download. Yeah, I'll go to the location. This is the data we got, and if I open this, ah, this is Avro. This is Avro format. So you won't be able to so see Avro dot schema at the top. So this is the schema. Okay, this is like keys, type, name, fields, uh, user location, something, 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 user screen name. This is the Twitter name, right? So it will have a header like a tree schema, and these are the actual tweets we got. So pretty much looks like a key value pair only, and I'm not quite sure whether we got something interesting. So in this, uh, it is very difficult to read. Okay, but uh, I can search for something. What were the keywords we were looking for? I don't think there is anything on Modi. It is there somewhere. Can you see? Huh? Saraswati Vishnu Vidya Mantar, great admirer of Sri Narendra Namoda Das Modi. <laughs> some tweet right from somebody right what else we were searching for trump definitely there'll be trump ha ah, see so this is the tweet okay oh sorry so uh, avro files will have lot of metadata that is what you see this un unread characters actually it's not structured data right the tweet will be here um, so you can identify it uh, with uh, something uh, yeah, so Trump enabler is already saying his scout speaks something, something, something. So there is a tweet on Trump. We may not have anything on Netflix. I am not sure. There is something on Netflix. Huh. So, but it is in some other language. Okay. So Netflix tweet is in some other language. So some uh, tweet on Netflix. Right. So now. Um, ideally, you cannot process this data as it is. So you have to read the Avro file. Avro files can be read into Spark SQL. Spark SQL has a Avro package. We downloaded a Databricks XML package, if you remember. So we said Spark shell start with XML. Same way we can say Spark shell start with uh, Avro format. Okay, and. Uh, I think this should it should be able to read this. We will just try because I have not even tried it. Okay, so Spark should be able to read it. Uh, so what is the package we were using? Uh, we may not try it right now, but there is a package which you can read. Now that's what I was trying to do. Normally, if you use a Cloudera source, you will get it as JSON. JSON is much more easy to read than Avro. Avro, it's very difficult to read. But you can see the tweets are there. I mean, I didn't fake it. You're actually downloading tweets. I mean, I'm just saying, right? So Trump or whatever you were searching, uh, it was already there, right? So all of you are able to get this. Huh, so this one you can see. So you can just start the shell with this. Okay. So I'm just thinking whether I'll be able to read this. I'm not quite sure, but we will try. So I can just upload this in my home folder. I'm just uploading this in my home folder, okay? This Flume data, okay? And then what I want to do is, I want to start Spark Shell. PySpark 2. So let's see if we can read this, shall we? I am not sure, but we will say, we will say spark.read.avro. df equal to spark.read.avro. Ah. 
I guess we have to pre-process it. I am not 100% sure, but we will try it. Spark.read.avro should work. Oh, we have to import it, right? Okay. Java, Python. Okay. Guys, give me one moment. I am just checking if we can read it. df equal to what was the file name ah uh, the system got stuck quotes yeah Nah. So, I will show you how to process it, but there is a way right now. Dot Avro. Mm. I think we have to rename it as dot Avro. Rename. How do you get uh, file extensions to be shown? Properties. No, no, I want to rename it. If I just change, it will also happen dot txt, right? Where is view? Okay. This one, right? No, not that. <laughs> uh, view, options. I am just thinking whether this will work. It has to be an Avro. Uh, maybe it will work, maybe it will not work because the reason is uh, I directly asked Flume to save it as .txt. So, it may have a problem with that. Let us try that anyway once. Five four nine five one. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> now it is showing an error well, after reading. Block size is invalid or too large for this open. Okay, okay, okay. We have to change it. Yeah, it says error while looking for metadata. No here. Avro runtime error. So, there is something called block size. Anyway, when Flume was saving the data, uh, I asked it to save it as .txt and, and that is something I should not have done. So, now when I convert to Avro, I am not able to read it. But there is a way you can read Avro for sure in SPAR, right? Uh, I want to show you one more example on log data. This is much more easy, not like Flume example. And I can share this with you to try yourself because uh, getting the uh, what you say Twitter data is one thing okay second thing is that how do you actually catch log files using flume and this is the real application right so what I have done in our cluster I have installed a small utility um, I'll just close this window okay can you see a folder called uh, not here yeah so there is a folder called gen underscore logs Okay, and if I do an ls, there is a script called a start logs dot sh. It's a, it's a log generation utility. So if I run this script, what will happen? Start logs dot set is dot slash start. 
so i just started the script what will happen now log files will keep getting generated but the question is that where is it getting generated so there is a folder called logs if i go to this folder okay if i do an ls there is a file called access.log if i do a tail on this file can you see logs getting generated yeah so this is streaming data right and this simulates see add to cart this simulates how a user is browsing an e-commerce website see categories golf shoes his login page again departments fitness product some product he is clicking again department footwear categories right check out so it will keep on generating some dummy data so you have some data to work at least right and this is how an e-commerce website actually will have the logs so when you click on a product in amazon it will log like this so you it it will log your ip address the date the get request you are having the http response code which platform windows which browser all the data so what i did now i started this utility hmm? and i will give it to you 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 will you can also start it right now this will keep on generating these log files now how do i catch it using flume so that is usually the application of flume it is designed to catch log files right so let it run here i don't want to disturb and i can do a control c it will not kill it because be behind the scenes it will be running and i have configured a flume agent if i go to raghu uh, do you see a file called uh, some conf file yeah, there is a flume.conf there is a july.conf right yeah look at this particular configuration this is more easy for you to understand my source is called a gen channel is called mem channel uh, sync is called hd the type of source is what exic in the last example we were using a twitter source this example the type is called exic that's defined by uh, apache what the exic source will allow you to do it will allow you to run a command and get the output and this is the command you are running tail dash f on the log so it will keep on tailing the log right this x6 source and whatever data it will get it will place it in the memory this is the memory channel and in the hdfs what i'm doing i'm saying that dump all the data in a folder called flume underscore demo right and these are the properties so some of you ask me like how do you control like it will create file on hadoop but when it should create a file these are the properties so you have something called a role interval role size and role count which means role interval is 120 that means two minute so it will wait for two minutes and then create a file second property is role size this is i guess 10 mb so if the file size reaches 10 mb another file will be created role count is 100 if it gets 100 lines in the log entry it will create one more so whichever of this reaches first it will work so you can adjust it so sometimes probably it starts generating the logs the, and it reaches 100 logs in entry it will create a new file because this is the property which you reached first or if the log files are very big probably only 50 lines came but it crossed 10 mb or 20 mb it will roll into one more so using this property you can configure when the file should be generated on the hdfs ah, so maybe these two also does not so you are saying that if if the total size of the file reaches 10 mb a new file should be created what if you ran the system for two minutes still it is 5 mb and in that five minutes you got only 50 log files so these two conditions are not violated whatever happen after 120 seconds a new file will be created first it will uh, apply so these are the three thresholds on the hdfs sync that you can apply here ah we can so here i can change so anything that you do in flume configuration is in this file that you do rest everything is simple this is memory this is this this is this same thing yeah this is the location where that thing is running gen underscore logs logs access this is where the logs are generating no website it is uh, how do i say dummy it is not getting from a website ah just for class purpose so you can get these kind of softwares so you need some data from where will you get the data right so it will generate some random data for you 
So you will feel that somebody is giving you the data. But what is the interval of excluding the state? It is one second by default. Ha, but every second will execute. So you will not miss anything. Continuously it will execute. And the tail will exactly tail from last time, like till how many you have tailed, right? So, but uh, in between this time it will buffer the data which was that is ah, correct, correct. So, we will actually run this to see if it is working, right? That is one thing you have to do, right? So, how do you run flume? Last time I did not show you. You will say flume dash ng uh, agent name. What was the name of the agent? I think I have it here. Just copy paste from here. July, right? It's better to do like this. So you are saying flume dash ng. This is the keyword flume next generation agent with a name log agent and the configuration file is in this july.conf. If I hit enter, ideally it should run. Yeah, so it says component type sync started see it says creating uh, the log file here right so i think uh, it will reach 100 lines first i don't know we have given three condition right either reach 10 mb or reach 100 files or wait 120 second i think 100 files will reach first 100 lines i think that is the that might be the case even i don't know how frequently it is generating but you can see that it is running and if you go to Hadoop, just go to Hadoop uh, here, what was the folder name we gave? Flume demo, right? Okay. So here if I look at here, there will be a folder called Flume demo somewhere. I will refresh. Um, flume demo. Can you see a folder? Yeah, there is flume demo. Yeah, so this is the file that it is generating. See, it is a temp file. You can see zero bytes, right? Why that is a zero byte? It will generate a temp file and once that threshold reaches, it will convert to a .txt. So right now, you won't see the file here. Once either it has to reach that uh, 120 seconds or 10 MB or whatever, then it this temp file will be converted to .txt and pushed here. Or I can st stop the flume agent, then this file will appear here. Another way is that I can stop the flume agent, then whatever data it has collected so far, it will come here. So I can just go here, say kill the flume agent. Oops. Yeah, I killed it, right? So the moment I killed it, if I go here, this could have been created a text file. Ha, two came actually, there was a role also, right? And if I open any one of them, you have the log files. Same log files which we were user browsing, blah, 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 right? whatever we were doing, same is available here. So this is how you bring log data to Hadoop. So I will do one thing, I will give you this log generation utility and you have to copy that in your home folder, it's just a folder and I will write instructions how to start and stop it. Huh? And this configuration file also I will give you a flu. So first you start the log utility, run this and change the HDFS path, your home folder automatically the logs should start coming in your folder. See whether you can do it. So this is the actual use case of Flume. Uh, normally people discuss Twitter, but rather than Twitter, Flume is commonly used for this. This if you want to read into Spark, it will directly read, but structure if you want to give, uh, you need a regex. Yes.